Erev Tov Harim, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. And greetings to those watching on live stream. I trust this is going to be a blessing for you. It's a very important message. It uh, has a very, very much prophetic uh, ramifications, what, we, what you will be viewing here tonight. So uh, I trust that, that somehow we can kind of uh, open your eyes to some things that are going on. Uh, and I don't want to say the Lord has revealed this to me, but uh, it seemed that I felt impressed to go a certain way to bring out some very important biblical facts regarding the statement that was made by French Foreign Minister uh, some months ago now. Uh, it's been quite a few months ago now, almost a year ago, I would uh, guess to say now, where he spoke about 500 days in order to avoid climate chaos. So let me first uh, just play that portion of, the, of this broadcast for you so you can hear his words once again. We have 500 days to avoid the climate chaos. Very important issue, issue of uh, uh, climate change, climate chaos, and we have, I said that we had 500 days to avoid the climate chaos. And I know that President Obama and John Kerry himself are uh, committed uh, uh, on, on this subject, and uh, I'm sure that uh, for them, with uh, a lot of other friends, uh, we should be able to reach um, uh, a success in this very important matter. That there is a clip there from foreign, uh, from the French foreign minister who stated this. Uh, John Kerry was at his side at the second time he sp spoke about the 500 days to avoid the climate chaos. Now. Ever since this has come out, it has sparked all kinds of speculations of what might happen. And uh, people have counted down the 500 days. They put the timing at the 500 days from when he said this to September the 24th. There has been speculation that there is a meteorite that will be passing the earth at that time. And that this meteorite could in fact impact the earth which could cause a global climate chaos. Um, uh, these are just some of the things that I wanted to bring to your attention first is the things that have been said. We also know that there has been, um, uh, as well, uh, the United Nations has been preparing a summit that was going to be in November, which would be beyond the 500 days. Uh, they would be speaking about the climate uh, change, changes that are coming. Now, Keeping this in mind, at the same token, scientists are saying that there is no climate chaos coming. Uh, the scientists are actually reporting on different uh, media sources that in uh, some cases it's a hoax. They say it's just a fabrication of the United Nations. In, in other places there, uh, they're saying uh, even uh, from what I understand with some of the science uh, outlets there, including NASA, that there is no meteorite that it would that would be impacting the Earth in September of this year. Uh, and, and I understand if there if there was, and I'm not saying there is or there is not going to meteor, be a meteorite that will impact the Earth or an asteroid or whatever the case may be. But nonetheless, I don't believe that we would really get that much of information from the scientific community. That would certainly be something that would be hushed, no doubt. But um, but then I began to weigh in in something that came on my heart today. And I just, I, I want to say it, I'd rather downplay it than to lift it up. I'd rather just tell you from my heart what I think about these things here. And so I, I want to uh, share some things here with you. But who has been at the forefront that has been leading uh, this big push for this, this global climate change? And if anybody knows, it's Pope Francis. Now, we know that the United Nations has been big on this, but of course, the Vatican runs the United Nations. But Pope Francis has even published his encyclical, wherein it is addressing climate change. Let me just quote to you from that, what he says here. Um, it says here, uh, and I'm just reading you a portion of an article here that I pulled up from the internet uh, um, that speaks about Pope's, Pope's message on climate change uh, was leaked, was, was the title of this document here. It says, leaked documents or not, Francis remains enormously popular, and when he talks, world leaders and the media listen. This Pope doesn't speak 
and sound bites, he speaks in headlines. What is an encyclical and why are they important? This just happened to be part of where this document was going to here. Uh, it says, derived from the Greek word for circle, a papal encyclical is a letter from the Pope to a Catholic clergy and lay people around the world. Often the letters clarify Catholic's doctrine, reiterate points um, of dogma, address contempor uh, contemporary issues uh, through the light of church teachings. Pope Francis, though, they state in the article, has said he hopes his letter will remain a wide, uh, excuse me, will reach a wider audience, including world leaders meeting for several key environmental summits this year. Encyclicals aren't considered infallible, few papal documents are, but scholars say they're su surpassed in importance only by the papal bulls, which define dogma. All right, now, uh, it also states here, in other words, Pope Francis won't be offering hints from uh, Heloise, said Bishop Oscar uh, Cantu of uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico, referring to a popular advice column. Cantu said the world's 1.2 billion Catholics should approach the encyclical with reverence and respect. Many of the more than 300 published papal encyclicals concern spiritual matters like faith, charity, but since the late 1800s, popes have written about labor rights, nuclear disarmament, and economics. And of course, Pope Francis' latest encyclical is majorly about climate change. Well, you might wonder then, why is there so much talk about climate change? And why is the Pope of Rome spearheading this very issue? Why has he made it an issue? Why has the French minister spoke about this? Why are the politicians in it? Now, some claim that it's because of global warming. And as I said also, a lot of conspiracy, 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 conspiracy theorists are theorizing that we're going to be impacted by an asteroid. I can't say that that's not going to happen, but that's not what I'm looking at when I'm seeing the things that are taking place before us. I'm trying to look at this from a biblical perspective, in this case here, and noticing the things that are taking place. Keep in mind as well, now they, there's, there's a lot of things that are happening in September as it is. Pope Francis is visiting the United States. He's addressing both houses of Congress. We also know that he's going to the United Nations and addressing the United Nations there. He will be bringing and speaking about the encyclical about global climate change, uh, among other issues as well. We believe that he's going to bring about also the new world order. He's trying to unite the world together. He has been busy uniting the religions of the world together. And I want you to keep in mind as well as I'm speaking these things to you here, what is one of the major things that he united not too long ago? The Muslim world. He's really brought together the Muslim faiths from every walk that you can imagine, bringing them together, the different countries and their leaders, bringing them to the Vatican, doing prayers with them, showing them that they are all one. Another odd thing is, though, is he's very much pro-Muslim, but he's not pro-Jewish. In fact, if anything, he's done everything he can to undermine Israel's right to their own land, including, as we have published here quite frequently here lately, that they're internationalizing Jerusalem. And it's amazing, not very many news sources have picked up on this. In fact, if you're able to share that, if you're able to take and even post the videos about Jerusalem being internationalized and get it on every news forum and in their comment sections that you possibly can to wake up people of what's going on, I would greatly appreciate that because the world needs to know. Even though they're going, they're going to announce it eventually, and they may announce it this September, the world needs to know. They need to know what they're doing to the Jewish people. But of course, when they announce it, it's going to be announced as a great thing. All the while, the Jewish people will be going through a great birth pain as they're being uprooted out of Jerusalem, while the 
Pope of Rome and the dignitaries and all the world leaders are going to say it was a great thing that they've done. I believe this is something that's going to happen in September at the United Nations meeting as well. They're going to divide Israel. Now, whether or not the, the, the Palestinians get their state then, it's not known, but I do believe they're going to show then that Jerusalem is now an international city for all religions. And that's why I am begging you to get out there and let the people know. Share the videos that we're doing here. This news, especially the news clips about Jerusalem being an international city that I did, showing the actual photos, show this to the world. They've got to know what's going on. They need to know the sinister side of this because the Pope has an advantage over us. He has the entire world media at his disposal. That's the way Satan is. He likes having the upper hand and that's exactly what he has as far as media is concerned. He's got the upper hand. The only news, decent sized news people that have actually had us on and that was Hebrew Nation Radio. They had us on, but it should be everywhere and it should be brought out. Now, so I make the strong case here that the Pope of Rome is for this uh, particular, um, uh, the, the, the agenda for climate control. And of course, as the French Prime Minister says, I want to keep reiterating this for you, a global climate chaos. And by the way, friends, they are right. There is going to be a climate chaos. His words were right. And unfortunately, though, the scientists don't see it coming. And this is where I'm going to share different scriptures here with you here in, a, in just a moment here. Let me also bring up the fact that it has been stated, and I cannot corroborate this myself. I tried to get some corroboration before coming on other than uh, just some um, uh, private sources that are saying that CERN will be fired back up in September as well. Now, we already know from the news I gave you the other day, CERN has even admitted themselves, the, the director of CERN, that they are trying to reach into other dimensions. They see apparitions when they fire CERN up. I mean, they are definitely going for another dimension. It's going to lose Satan. It's, and, and let me say this. I don't want to confuse this wording here. Satan's already loose. We know that. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. We know that Satan goes and... and, and, and causes uh, trials and temptations and, and causes a lot of problem. But there are certain demons, though, that are bound in that river Euphrates, and this is going to open that door for those demons to come out as well. Who knows what will happen at that point there? But we know the Bible says that when the flood comes in, when Satan comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard against him, and that's what God is about to do. Now, as they're all saying, it's global climate chaos is coming. And I do believe that that's exactly right. Let me take, and we're going to go to a scripture here in a minute. I'm, we're going to actually look at Psalm 83. It's going to be one of those passages. There's another one I want to pull up, though, here. And so just give me just a second while I'm able to locate this one here because I, it came to me and I thought about it earlier, and then I forgot to do it. Um, And um, this is, I believe we can go to Matthew chapter 2, verse 1, in looking at this particular passage here. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in those days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. Now, it's interesting that Herod actually gets together, the, uh, gets together his particular men there to discuss the birth of Yahshua. He wanted to know when he was born. So he gathers his, as it says, when he had pr privily called the wise men and inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. He's doing things in secret. And see, he even brings together the princes of Judah 
Isn't that interesting? It brings the princes of Judah. For, uh, 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 excuse me. Let, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me back up. Let's read. Let's look at this one more time here. Uh, when, when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them when Christ should be born. You see, the Pope of Rome is prophesied to do the exact same thing. And that may come to a shock to some, but that's exactly what's prophesied. That's Psalm 83. All right, I just wanted to set a foundation here for you. So let's, let's now go... We're going to look at Psalm 83. It says here, Keep thou not silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make atonement, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. The head is their leader. They've lifted up their leader. They've, they've, they've found a person to put in place now. It says here, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Keep that one in mind right there. They consulted against thy hidden ones. Those of you that have been listening to my broadcast and the teachings, etc., know that the hidden ones are the two witnesses. I remember Chuck Missler asked me, Steve, do you think that's the bride? It can't be. I let him know it can't be. Because see, the thing is, is they're consulting against a group that's already hidden or persons that are already hidden. The bride was not hidden at that point and neither will be when the cons consultation is done then. And of course, what would they consult against the bride? If the bride is taken out of the way, uh, then what good would it do to consult then? They're not coming back. But the two witnesses are clearly coming back. And this is why, just as Herod consulted again with the scribes and the priests of his day to know when Yeshua would be born, so Pope Francis is discussing in, in his secret chambers with priests, with his priests, with the different clergy, even with the churches that have joined in with the Vatican evangelical churches, leaders that have been speaking about the prophecies, that have, many of them have talked about the coming of the two witnesses. He knows the scripture of Revelation 11. It's there. They're coming. And they are going to bring global climate chaos to this world. And just like Herod, he's consulting as well. That's why the scripture says, and consulted against thy hidden ones. Why is it against them? The consultation is, what are we going to do about it? What can we do to stop it? What can we do to alter it? How can we change it? Because see, the scientists right now are totally baffled by why they're saying a global climate change. And then, of course, there's other people that are writing and saying, well, they're only doing it for money. To make their millions and billions off of scaring everybody with global climate change. Well, that could certainly be there too. That, that could be that as well. But believe me, the Pope of Rome, it's more than just money. He wants to look like a prophet. Because there is no evidence for a global climate change of a magnitude that would be warranted for the foreign French foreign minister to say a climate chaos. There is no evidence to support what he's saying. Even if it's global warming, we're many, many, many years out from anything really happening. But like Herod, he's already been told by the priest, you have two witnesses coming. Things are mounting up. Satan is ready to come on and, and to be worshipped as well, by the way. He wants to be like God and be sitting in the temple of God and be worshiped as if he were God. Being in the temple of God, that's another thing that brings a very interesting thought to mind. We know that on the 12th of July this month, the Temple Institute says that they have some important news to announce to the world that will change the world. Could it be that they're going to announce the beginning of the, uh, the, the construction of the third temple? By the way, that's the prerequisite for the two witnesses coming on the scene. That's another thing the Pope of Rome knows as well. Because in Revelation 11, it says, they, you know, well, let's just, let's look at that real quick. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. 
So there's going to be a temple built. Okay? There's going to be a temple. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. That's right. The outer court has been given to the Vatican. It's already been given to the Vatican. That's the sad part. The Vatican already has that outer court. They were given Mount Zion. Prophecy was fulfilled on Mount Zion in the book of Obadiah when the Pope of Rome came and drank on the mountain. It says, and I'm just paraphrasing this, they shall drink, or you shall drink. Oh, it's talking about the holy mountain of God in Obadiah. Let's, let's actually read it. You know, this, this, I believe this is a very important broadcast that, that we're doing here, and we don't want any mistakes made on this. It's in verse 16, for as you drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall uh, be as though they had not been. Now, that is identified clearly to Esau and his descendants that would drink upon the mountain. And of course, all the nations. In the Hebrew language, shutatetem is in the plural masculine showing that men only would be partakers of that first mass as the Catholic Church did on Mount Zion in the upper room above King David's tomb. The, set, the following week, it was inclusive, and even in the Hebrew language, it's gender-inclusive plural, showing that both men and women would partake of the, of the next mass. And that's exactly the way it happens. Rome reports clearly identified it. They made the mistake of making it public. I got the video and was able to prove it. It's exactly right. And they put a lot of safeguards in their video, too, because they didn't want nobody being able to reproduce it. Well, Pope of Rome, your little bunch of thugs, you're busted because you said in Rome reports, you stated in there that the Pope and his delegation and the priests that were on, that were there in Jerusalem were the only ones that could participate in that particular mass. And it was men only. So we are seeing scripture being fulfilled. And anyone that needs to know that that was the Pope of Rome and then all the other people were permitted to do it later, all you have to do, read all of Obadiah. You find out that Esau is attributed there. And of course, it identifies him as the Romans because why? Obadiah clearly identifies Esau as being standing aside, doing nothing about the ransack of Jerusalem in 70 AD. That was Titus, the Roman general that did that. The Syrians did the dirty work on the temple and and. Uh, Titus, a Roman general, stood by and allowed it to happen. And, of course, the treasures were taken back to, to, to Rome, where they still sit to this day. Now, again, as I said, what is Rome doing here? They're consulting against thy hidden ones. It's not only that, though. Let's take a look a little bit more here. In Psalm 83, verse 4, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may, may be no more in remembrance. Rome is, that's their ultimate goal for the Jews. Do you think Shimon Peres really is Jewish? I don't. You know, when the Bible says there are Jews that say there are Jews and there are not, I do believe those that are confederate with Rome are really probably not Jews in the first place. If they are, it's a shame that they call themselves Jews because when you confederate yourself with Rome, that is a shame in itself. And by the way, there are rabbis in Israel, just made news, and, I, and, and, and I'll try to pull this headline up for you in a second here, but the rabbis there are, are, are calling Pope Francis to repentance, and they're giving him so many days to do so. I agree, he should repent. It's his only hope, and if he doesn't, he will be like Judas. He will betray the son of the living God that is coming to reveal himself to the Jews. Now, another concern that I have, and this is one of the reasons why I believe that the building of the third temple may be what is going to be announced on the 12th. Rabbi Yehuda Glick recently met with the Muslim people in Turkey. And we know that the Turkish people have a great power in helping bringing about the building of the third temple. Because according to the Temple Institute, the only way they can go about building the third temple is when all the Muslim parties come together and agree for it to be built. That's according to the Temple Institute. 
And they may finally have that agreement. And of course, how would they get the Palestinian people to go along? Remember, the Palestinians are the small people according to Daniel 11. The prince that shall come comes up strong with a small people. He uses the Palestinians in order to get what he wants, and that's to take Israel as a whole. He makes it into two nations. That's Ezekiel chapter 35, by the way. These two nations shall be mine, he says in his heart. And God identifies it as Israel. And that's what he does. He comes in there and divides it. Isn't it interesting, though, that, the, that, that Israel actually gave the Pope an official seat when Pope Benedict was in office? He gave him an official seat there on Mount Zion. That made him, by the way, the king of Israel. Indirectly, he's now the king of Israel by doing that for the Pope of Rome. So they give him an official seat, and then, of course, they come, they drink on the mountain to show that they're the kings that actually, you know, that the Pope is the king that rules the world. It's what he wants. The Pope of Rome wants a third temple built because he wants to sit in that third temple as if he were God. There's also a lot of talk right now in Israel about the Messiah coming. One rabbi there is, in, is urging the Jews from around the world to be back in Israel this September for the coming of the Messiah, the Mashiach, to be here. But the problem is, is Eliyahu, Elijah the prophet, and Moses both must come first before the coming of Mashiach. Now, as Christians, we would say, well, according to what we believe as Christians, John the Baptist had already forerun. Elijah has already come. And they did to him what was listed, but he forerun the Messiah. But God is not slack concerning his promise. Yeshua also made the comment, that truly Elias shall first come, that's Elijah, and shall restore all things. Because they asked him, doesn't the, scri the scribe say that Elias or Elijah must first come? And Yeshua says, he shall first come. Now John's already dead. He shall first come and restore all things. But in their ministry, when they come, these two witnesses, these two anointed ones of Zechariah's prophecy, they're going to bring about a global climate chaos for this world. Let's look at that. And then we're going to come back to Psalm again. According to this prophecy, going to verse 3 in Revelation 11, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, Fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. And have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues so often as they will. We are talking about a global climate chaos. Let's look and see what happens in Psalm 83. And this is how you'll know it's about Pope Francis. Back to verse 5, 83 verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, against Israel. Who's consulted together? Who is confederate? One, they consulted against thy hidden ones. In other words, they're trying to figure out what to do because the two witnesses are going to bring a climate chaos. So the Pope of Rome is trying to get ahead of it. He is also the false prophet. He's prophesying that there's going to be a global climate chaos. He is consulted with the priest. He is consulted with the scribes. He is consulted with the political leaders of the world as well to get his message out. He's trying to look like he's prophesying it coming when all the other signs say it's not coming. Could it be that a meteorite will strike the earth? Sure it could be. I'm not saying that it is. I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know what's going to disrupt it all, but I know that what they say will take place because God will back it up. Now, this is how you know it's, this is Rome. The Tabernacles of Edom. Wow and the Ishmaelites 
the tabernacles of Adam. One, Adam, Esau, Edom, and Obadiah is attributed to the Roman general Titus. Their descendants from the, from the survival of Hadad, from David's sword, who was raised in, raised in the house of Pharaoh, becomes the king of Syria. That's why they have an alliance with Syria to this day. Later goes into northern Africa, and according to Obadiah, they come into Rome. They're now part of Titus, the Roman general, who ransacked the city of Jerusalem, and God put it at his blame and called him Esau. So that's how you know that the Vatican is who this is about. But it says the tabernacles. They're the mother of harlots, churches, tabernacles. So he has brought with him the ecumenical movement. The World Council of Churches are backing him. And so it says here, the tabernacles of Edom. In other words, all the churches that are in one unison with Edom and the Ishmaelites. Wow. The Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarenes, Gebal and Ammon and Amalek and the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Aser also joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot. And it goes on to say they are confederate against thee. So Rome joined with the Muslims. My friends, this was a prophecy that is what, 3,000 years old? Or maybe not that old, but nearly 3,000 years old. And yet you have watched it fulfilled in front of your eyes and didn't realize it was fulfilling? You know, when I saw the part about drinking on the mountain, the Lord revealed to me, that's the Pope of Rome. That's the Catholic Church. And he broke it down even by the language and showed me what it was. And here it is in the Psalm as well. And you have watched it on world news and we never picked up on it that his confederation with the Muslim community is Psalm 83 being fulfilled. And now he's talking about a global climate Major problem that's coming on the earth. He's trying to prophesy of a global climate change. French president calls it climate chaos. He knows the two witnesses are coming. He's been consulting against them what to do to counteract this problem. And then David in the psalm says that the tabernacles are with him, that are with him. The tabernacles of Adam showing that the World Council of Churches, in other words, the denominational churches, were going to be with him. The Ishmaelites are with him, the Muslims, the Sunnis, the Shias, whatever group of Muslims that are joining with him. They're joining forces. And what are they joining forces to do? Also to come against Israel. Let's look at Psalm 83. We're going to read more of that. Hang on one second. Let me pull this up for you. I mean, my friends, the, the simplest prophecy written in the Bible, and we've looked at it. So many people, they say, okay, we know. So they call it the Psalm 83 war, but they're begging God not to be silent. Israel is begging God not to be silent. God must be silent in the beginning. He has to be silent in the beginning. Micah chapter 4. That's another prophecy I've shown you right here in the prophetic segment of our news that is, that was, that's being fulfilled right before your eyes. In fact, you've not even seen the fullness of it come to pass as of yet, but it's fulfilling right before your eyes. When I show you the checkpoints there in Jerusalem, they're internationalizing the city. Don't you know Micah 4? God says, I'll return you to Mount Zion to your holy mountain, I'll be there with you, even with you. And he says, but why are you in labor? Why are you in pain? They'll take you and take you out of the city and you'll dwell in the fields. I'm just paraphrasing that again. But it was a prophecy before your eyes being fulfilled. Now, they haven't taken them out of the city as of yet, but you see the infrastructure for the international city that's about to be announced. And when they announce it, you're going to know before it happens, that's that prophecy of Micah chapter 4. This is why God says that they have to be silent. They say, or they cry out, why, you know, God, keep thou not silent. 
It is like a silence. God has to wait for the for prophecy to fulfill itself before God will deliver them. So the tabernacles of Adam and the Ishmaelites and all the different little Muslim nations there, they come together and they're against Israel. And yes, they are. The United Nations in September is going to vote. The French, along with another nation, has got together with the French that are going to vote what? They're going to vote to, 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 to bring in, to make a Palestinian state. They're bringing a resolution for a Palestinian state. They're confederate against Israel. And of course, the church is aside with the Vatican. Do you know that on the 20th of September, the World Council of Churches for a week or for six days is doing a march against the Jews? Against Israel? It says that, the, that Israel is there illegally occupying Palestine? They're confederate together. You know, Pope Francis, you're being exposed. You churches that have joined the Vatican, my brothers and sisters that are a part of it, get out of these churches. I, I, would not, I would not want to be at the same table with a church that supports the Vatican. No wonder why God says, come out of her. Revelation, I believe it's 18.4, come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins. And her plagues, by the way. And the two witnesses are bringing the plagues. You don't think that the plagues won't strike your home if you're a part of that? The only ones that will be spared are those that stood with Israel. Those that stand with the two witnesses that are coming on this earth. By the way, those that did not believe the message of Moses and Aaron when they came, the plagues fell on them as well. Let me read to you what else it says here. Verse 9 of Psalm 83. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, to Caesarea, to Jabin, the brook of Kisan, which perished in Endor. They became as dung on the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb. See? He goes on. They're, they're asking God to make all this happen. Let them be confounded. It gets on down later. But notice what it said in verse 5, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. They're confederate against the God of heaven. This is, you are watching these prophetic words unfold right before your own eyes. This is what is happening. The United Nations the World Council of Churches, every one of them are confederate together with the Pope of Rome against Israel and calling Israel occupiers of the land that God gave them. And the land that God prophesied in Zechariah, Isaiah, many other places in the Bible that they would come home to their land. Now, in closing this news broadcast, I want to just point out some other facts. Do you know, archaeologically speaking, when Elijah, the Tishbite, Eliyahu, was on the earth, he went against Baal. I, I pulled up a little article here where a man writes about this. And he writes in here, archaeology helps interpret God's word. I thought it was an interesting comment. I don't know if I can agree with that, but I thought it was, I, I would have to say it enlightens God's word in the past anyway. He said some archaeology finds have served as key unlocking the messages of God's word. Archaeologists discovered an ancient city in northern Syria named Agarit. Uh, during the excavations, they uncovered a clay tablet that contained stories about the god Baal and a stone monument to Baal. The tablets and the monument pictured Baal as the god of lightning and rain. Isn't that interesting? He was a storm. God responsible for bringing fertility to the land. Isn't it interesting that Pope Francis is trying to do that very thing? Just like Baal. He's trying to bring out his encyclical, prophesying we're going to have a problem, and what are we going to do to change it? But you know what? Eliyahu, Elijah, 
came against him. And when he said there wasn't going to be rain come, nothing Baal could do could change it. And even the Mount Carmel showdown, he challenged them. But all their weeping and moaning and cutting themselves didn't change nothing. We also have another archaeological proof that, uh, and this is according to Dave Olmstead in an article called Drought in the Bible, the sediment uh, proved that there was actually a drought back in around 850 BCE or BC before Christ. And it says here, the existence of the drought mentioned in the, in, in the drought steels is confirmed by sediment cores taken from the bottom of the Sea of Galilee. Langott and all in 2013 who, who proved this. According to these courses, the second worst drought in ancient history occurred around 800 BCE, plus or minus 40 years. The worst drought occurred during the time between the Bronze and Iron Ages and no doubt was the trigger for that transition. The Yahweh's Revolution drought was as intense as that 50-year-long inter interage drought, but was only one-fifth as long as only lasted about 10 years. Now, that's what they're showing there. But it's interesting that they can actually tell that at a time when Elijah was here, there was actually a drought of a magnitude, unbelievable magnitude. Same, there's also that same proof for the drought that struck Egypt. There's also archaeological proof that the waters from Egypt, by the way, this is Egyptian documentation that the water was turned to blood in Egypt, that they had a water that was turned like blood on the river. God doesn't make mistakes. And he's sending his two witnesses, Moses and Elijah. And I can't say that this September is when that will happen But when they do come, it will be a global climate chaos. But what's interesting is the fact that they're trying to predict when this is going to happen. That's exactly what Herod tried to do. Well, Herod was trying to predict the location. But they were trying to find out about the coming of the Messiah. Because why? Herod wanted to stop it. Remember, in Psalm 83, they consulted against the hidden ones. Everything else you're seeing being fulfilled right before your eyes. I trust you're seeing the handwriting on the wall. We will have to wait and see what happens in September. We know there's a lot of things coming up in September. And I can't say for sure what all these things will be. I don't know that. All I do know is I'm seeing prophecy being fulfilled. Right now, the Jews are saying the Messiah is coming. Well, I do believe that Elijah must come first. Even the Jews are expecting that. Remember, John the Baptist only fulfilled part of Malachi's prophecy. He never turned the heart of the children back to the fathers. Yeshua never credits him with that, only turning the hearts of the fathers to the children, which was Yeshua. Yeshua was the Messiah, the heart of the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were looking for that righteous seed the seed of the woman written in Genesis. But he doesn't attribute the other part of the scripture to John. So it's still to be fulfilled. That's why the Jews will get Eliyahu, Hanavi, Elijah the prophet. They're also going to get Moshe because the prophecies that he never fulfilled in his own life will be fulfilled in the very coming near future. So do we have global climate chaos coming? Yes, we do. Should we prepare for it? I think it'd be a good idea. I know there's many that are believing that they will actually go before that time. That would be wonderful. But I have a feeling, seeings are coming to restore all things, that even the bride will hear their message. I'm Stephen Benoon. With the